Hello and welcome, my name is Doom the Machine. Today, we're going to be learning about making our own custom brushes in Adobe Illustrator. Stick around. Today, we're going to talk about the types of custom brushes that are available. We're going to learn how to make our own version of every type of custom brush that you can in Adobe Illustrator. And we'll finish up with a couple quick custom brush tricks and tips. So let's get into it. There are five main types of brushes for us to use, edit, and make ourselves. The first is the calligraphic brush. Calligraphic brushes are variations of a basic brush that can be used for just drawing and painting. The angle, the roundness, and the thickness of the brush can be adjusted and you can apply pressure sensitivity to any of these attributes to make a drawing brush that's perfect for the style that you like to draw for your needs. Next up we have bristle brushes and honestly, I never use them. <laughs> they create a very specific effect, a sort of wispy, washy, painterly effect. They're tilt sensitive, so if you have a drawing tablet like a Wacom tablet with uh, tilt sensors, then you can make use of that. I'm sure some people would get some good use out of these. I personally just never really found a need for any of these types of effects in the stuff that I make. And then we have scatter brushes. Scatter brushes use existing vector art and will scatter it around randomly across a path. Uh, this can be used for many different things. Anytime you need kind of just a random scattering of objects. And then there's the art brush. This is the most important of the custom brush types, in my opinion. Art brushes take some existing art object, some, some illustration, and align it to the path that you draw. You can use this for anything, from turning a painted texture object into an actual brush that you can paint with, to creating objects that can be kind of bent and manipulated in ways that you couldn't before. And last but not least, pattern brushes. These can turn an object or a series of objects into a repeating pattern that repeats along the path. You can even get fancy and add separate objects for the corner transitions. This is good for creating brushes that need to repeat over and over again. And you can actually change the kind of frequency that they repeat at and the scale of the repeating object on the path. They're pretty cool. So there you go. That's my grand tour of the different brush types in Adobe Illustrator. Each of these brushes is really different and they each have their own methods for making and using them. So now let's go through each brush and I'll show you how to make them and use them in your illustrations. So here we are in Adobe Illustrator and the first thing you need to do is make sure you have your brush palette and your stroke palette open. So you just go to window, make sure that brushes has a check mark. Make sure that stroke has a check mark. We're going to be learning how to make each of these types of brushes by actually making an illustration. So this is my brush monster and we are going to make him. Let's start with the calligraphic brush. So the way you make a new brush is you click this little button right here at the bottom of the brushes palette. It says new brush and the type of brush is going to be a calligraphic brush, obviously. So here's our calligraphic brush options and there really isn't much in here. You can change the base size down here. You can make it bigger or smaller, obviously. Just start out with mine at about 10. You can change the roundness that's right here. And that's just kind of how squished and flat it is on one side. And you can change the angle. And that is only really useful if you have it kind of rounded. So, you know, if you wanted like a bit of an angled brush for some sort of writing. One important thing here is that any of these attributes can be applied with the pen pressure. So if I put the pressure here, you'll see that the this is the, the lowest pressure and this is the highest. Right now, they're all the same because I didn't put any variation. So set your variation at 10 point, uh, drag it up to the maximum. It'll be the variation between the full size of your 10 point brush and the smallest size, which would be basically zero. If you don't want it to be that much variation between them, you can kind of set it somewhere in the middle. So I'll just set mine in the middle like this and let's see how my brush looks. Yeah, you see how it's kind of thinner when I draw this way and thicker when I draw this way. So let's use this new calligraphic brush I made to draw the features on this monster's head. I'm just going to make this guy semi-transparent because this is just my sketch. Okay, and we gotta decide a color for this guy. I think uh, I think I'm gonna draw his basic body in first. This is just gonna be a shape. It's not gonna have a stroke, but we do need 
to select our new brush and make sure you change the color of the stroke in your color palette. I'm gonna make this one just a darker variation of his basic skin tone or his nose here. I'm pressing darker and lighter on my brush to make the stroke thicker and thinner. Get a couple extra little details there. Little imperfections, he is a monster after all. And we'll do the same with his mouth. I'm gonna do a slightly lighter color, I think. We can always change the colors later if we need to. And his eyes, let's make them black. Kind of messy looking. There we go. All right, and that's really all there is to a calligraphic brush. Let's move on to a scatter brush. Now, scatter brush will kind of distribute some sort of object and, and scatter it around kind of like as if you were dropping a bunch of them all in random uh, rotations and stuff. What I'm going to use this scatter brush for is you see these little lines of fur on his uh, on his body. That's what I'm going to use the scatter brush for. I'm going to make some sort of a, a little bit of a fur that will kind of scatter around. So let's do that. I have his skin tone here and we'll make it a slightly lighter variation on his skin tone. So I'm going to turn this into a group and I'm actually going to expand the appearance of this so that it is uh, outlined instead of actually made with uh, strokes. So now we just got to drag this object up on top of the brushes palette. We let it go there and it will give us the option to make a new brush. We can create a scatter brush, art brush, or pattern brush. We'll stick with scatter brush this time. So we're going to turn this object into our brush. Now there are four different categories you can select for this scatter brush. The size is the difference between how big and small compared to the original, the new objects are going to be as they're scattered around. Same thing with the rotation how much variation in the rotation will there be? If you wanted this to mostly be in the same direction as the original, just with a little bit of variation, you could do that. The scatter is kind of how far from the stroke they're distributed and the spacing is how far um, apart from each other they are. The low end is on this side and the high end is on this side. Right now there is no high end because these are all fixed. I'm actually going to set all of these to random because I want every single aspect of this to be kind of randomized. I'm going to want variations in the size, the spacing, the scatter, and the rotation across these. I'm not going to change these drastically. So the size, I'm not going to want super, super tiny little variations or huge variations of this thing. So I'm going to set this up 50% of the original for the low end. And for the upper end, let's go with 150. Same thing with the space. We'll go 50 and the upper end, eh, maybe 125 or so. The scatter will set down, see it can go really, really far down and really, really far up. Let's just go like a minus 125 and maybe a plus 125 on that. We don't want it to be too drastic because this, this tool, it could really scatter them all over the canvas if you let it. So just kind of keep it pretty close to the original 100% as you, as you can. Uh, except for the rotation, the rotation on the low end, we are going to bring all the way down and on the upper end, we're gonna bring all the way up. So everything from minus 180 to plus 180 and that will rotate it fully 360 degrees uh, randomly across the objects. The last bit here is the colorization. Now I'm actually gonna use this so the color that it is, if we don't set this to anything, the stroke itself, no matter what color you apply to the stroke, it will stay that color. But I wanna be able to change the color on this just ever so slightly. So I'm gonna set this as tints and shades. Luckily, it's automatically gonna set the key color as the color of my object because that's the only color in my object. But if you had different colors in your object, you might want to manually choose which of the colors in your object are going to be the key color. That's the base color that the stroke will be, all the objects in the stroke, and then you can tweak it brighter, darker, change the hue, whatever you wanna do, and it will adjust accordingly. So I'm gonna click okay on that. Now let's see how our new stroke looks. I'm gonna select the stroke, I'm gonna leave it at the base color, and there it is. See, some random variation, and if the actual stroke is too big, like I feel like this is a little too big for the skin of this monster, 
you can um, you can obviously you can double click on the actual stroke to adjust the stroke. So I could change the size and stuff like that. Let's just uh, I'm gonna change the size just the tiniest little bit just so you can see when I click OK here, it's gonna ask me do I want to apply to strokes or leave strokes. So if I was really happy with the way the strokes already looked, I could leave the strokes and then it would only apply to new strokes. But I'm gonna apply to strokes because I want all the strokes that I've already made to be updated with my latest change. Now, if I wanted the actual size of all this stuff to change, I can do it through editing the brush, or I can just edit the stroke in the strokes palette. So I could set that at say half a point, and there, that's the pretty much the exact size that I wanted to do for his skin here. So I'm going to come over here and just kind of draw over top of his skin. And because I set the uh, tints and shades over here, I can actually adjust the lightness of this. You see that? So I'm going to make his uh, his fur a little lighter and I actually feel like that's a little too small so I'm going to go a little bit bigger. There we go and I'm just going to kind of scribble over top of him to add some messy messy fur sticking out of his body. There we go let's add some uh, even lighter stuff on top just so there's some nice variation across the little hatches of hair that are popping out from his uh, from his skin there. Let's put tons let's make him really really hairy. Let's just go nuts with this. Let's add some darker ones in there too. There we go. And I'm going to group all of this except for his eyes, his nose, and his mouth. There we go. We've used a calligraphic brush for his face. We've used a scatter brush for the fur on his body. Next up, we're going to move on to the art brush. So for the art brush, I want to turn some of these um, little blades of grass that he's sitting on into a stroke so I can kind of paint them easily. So what I'm going to do is, I th actually, I think I'm going to make these maybe some ferns or some really scraggly little green plants. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw the stroke and let's, yeah, let's just make a kind of, kind of greenish, natural, ferny looking plant, some sort of leafy thing. I'm going to make this the exact kind of color and uh, just the, the look and feel of the whole thing is going to be pretty much perfect because once I start painting this, it's a lot easier to kind of make sure it's right now before it, than it is to change it later on. This is what I'm talking about when you say you can combine brushes because I'm working with a uh, calligraphic brush. You see how it's light and dark with uh, the different pressure sensitivity that I put on my pen. I'm using a calligraphic brush as I make the art for my art brush. So the better you can get at kind of mixing the brushes together, the easier and more kind of tools that you'll have at your disposal. Okay, that's good enough. So I'm going to highlight this whole thing, group it, and I'm going to expand its appearance so that the strokes are actually outlined. Okay, this feels pretty good. So I'm going to bring this over and make it into my new brush. And this time we are going to select an art brush. Now the options for the art brush are pretty simple. What you can do is change the direction that the kind of object goes in. So when you draw from this side to this side, do you want it to be this orientation or do you want it to be like this, where you draw from this side to this side, this is the end. In this case, I want to be able to draw from the base of the stem and up to the tip so that when I draw the stroke from the base to the tip, that's how it kind of appears. And I'm also going to change the colorization to the tints and shades as well. And this is what I was talking about before, where the key color, do you want it to be the light green or the dark green in this case? I'm just going to leave it at the default for that. And there are a few other options you can do here. Uh, scale proportionally means that this will always be the right size, no matter what size stroke that you do. If you do a big stroke, it will be a big object. Stretch to fit the stroke length is what I usually like to do because if I draw a long stroke, I don't usually want the object to be that much wider. I usually want it to be about the same, but it depends on the object, honestly. Now, um, you can also change the uh, width to be based on the pressure as well and the variation just like before, the lower end and the upper end. I really want this object just to be the base object that I've already created, so I'm just going to leave that the way it is. Now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to select my stroke and I'm going to draw with the brush tool some lines coming out from the ground here. So I put that like that. There we go. And uh, we can actually change the color of this a little bit. So I can make some of them darker, some of them lighter. So let's do the, uh, the ones behind him first and let's make those darker than the ones in front. So I'm gonna darken the green as it kind of comes out over here. Let's make another one coming out here. This one, you can actually change the uh, width of the stroke 
uh, right from the stroke palette without editing the actual brush. So I'm gonna make some of these a little bit more narrow and small, maybe even change their color the slightest little bit, make some of them darker. Add another one coming up here. There we go. And should we add a few on this side? Yeah, let's do it. See, that one's a little too skinny because I made the stroke long. That's why I don't like to set the width to be dynamic because you can always change the width right here from the stroke weight. Create a kind of three dimensionality to this. Let's do another really dark one behind these. We'll send them to the back. We'll make this one really big. Ooh, yeah, that looks cool. See, with, uh, with these kind of strokes, you can get some really nice happy accidents going on. Now let's put some in the front and we'll make these ones lighter so that they feel a little bit more like they're in the foreground. I'm gonna change the green to be a lighter green. And let's do one really light one right in front. Let's do some little ones too, some little baby ones. We'll do another one right here and maybe another one right. I'm not actually gonna be adding some bristle brushes to this guy. Uh, the way you create a bristle brush, you just click new, click bristle brush, and there are all sorts of different options. I, I really don't really care for this brush uh, very much. It's a little bit janky. It doesn't really work the way I want it to. I've played around with it a ton. It just, it never really turns out right. And the effects that I can get from this, I can get just as good with art brushes and using custom textures that I've made in other programs like Photoshop. But just to show you how it works, this is really changing the properties of an actual sort of three-dimensional brush that you can actually paint and draw with. It sounds cooler than it is. I'm just gonna leave it at the default here. You can, you can play around with these. It's, it's really very easy to adjust the different properties on this one, and they all do kind of different things with the brush. I'm not gonna focus on this, but I'll just show you with the default. And you can see the little icon around my brush. I'm actually tilting my pen here. So if I tilt my pen all the way to the left or to the right, the uh, actual brush tip changes in the program, which is cool. Uh, I find that's more useful in Photoshop and Illustrator, obviously, because as I paint with this, you'll see what happens here. I'm pressing darker here and I'm pressing lighter here and it, it kind of smooths it out and blurs it uh, a little bit. So I don't feel like the detail that you get when you're actually drawing with the thing translates into the object. And no matter what settings I choose, I can't make it look like real paint. If you think of a uh, use for this kind of effect, I say, just go for it. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's just, it's just not my jam. It's not something I have ever felt like I needed in my art. Moving on, the final brush we're gonna be talking about today is the pattern brush. And honestly, this is the most complicated, so I've saved it for last. There's some things you gotta think about when you're making a pattern brush. So if I was making a simple pattern brush of say a dashed line, I wanted a hand-drawn dashed line. You can do dashed lines in Illustrator, but let's say I wanted a dashed line and this is the dashed line that I want to repeat over and over again, right? Uh, I could repeat it just like this, but I wanna be able to draw it on a, on a wiggly stroke or something like that. So I'm going to expand this and here's the thing, when I put this as a brush, if I just use the object like this, it'll line up the ends together. So the, this end over here will end up over here. And if I don't kind of carefully plan, it'll be like this, where it'll put these two little knobby bits at the end together. So what you actually need to do is encase your object in a blank, empty rectangle. So you put a rectangle around it with no stro stroke and no fill, and you make sure that the rectangle edges are where you want the pattern edges to kind of line up. It's really simple once you do that. So I'm gonna group this together, create a new object, and we're gonna select a pattern brush. This is the interface here. The corner piece, it automatically generates, but you can actually um, edit your own corner tiles if you had a specific way that you wanted the corner to be. You can flip the direction that your object is on the stroke. So if you know, like if there was, let's say grass coming out of one side and you put it in as a stroke and the grass is on the inside and you did wanted it on the outside, you can flip it that way. And I'm also going to set the tints and shades so I can adjust the color of this. I'm gonna click okay, there we go. And I'm going to select this brush and I'm gonna draw a stroke with it. And you can see that my dash line is now properly aligned on the stroke and you can change the size. So that's why you can have this go on and on forever. It'll just add more and more of the same objects over and over again. With that in mind, the way we're gonna use the pattern brush for this guy is I'm going to make some sort of a, a limb, some sort of a hairy arm and leg coming out of his body here. So let's see how this goes. 
So keeping in mind that the end of one has to match up with the end of another, I'm going to start with a rectangle just to make sure that the size on this side matches up with the size on this side. You really have to make sure when you're making a pattern brush that your objects are seamless. So I'm going to add a little bit of a variation to the thickness on his limbs here. Just adding a few points and I'm going to make some of them come out a little bit, some of them come in, just to make his arms and legs a little bit wonky. There we go. And I'm going to add some fur, some little hairs to his arms and legs. Now I'm going to um, not bother adjusting the color after the fact for this one because I know that I want them all to be the same. So I'm just going to move this over here and make sure the color is exactly the way I want it. And I want just a darker version of his skin color. And this feels just perfect to me, right? So now I'm going to add on some little hairs on his arms and legs here to make them a bit of a darker color than the actual skin on his legs. I'm just going to go around and draw some random little hairs. That feels pretty good. So I know that when I reach the end of one, it will match up with the end of another. So this will be my base. I'm going to group this. I'm going to expand the strokes on this, expand the appearance so that the strokes are no longer strokes. They are now outlines. And I'm going to drag this over here and we are going to turn this into a pattern brush. And I'm going to leave all the default options because there's no reason I need to stretch this or change the colorization or anything like that. And now if I were to give this guy a really long leg, you can see there, it will duplicate the object and kind of draw it along the path. There we go. So I'm going to come over here. Let's uh, let's deviate from the sketch that I've drawn a little bit here. And we'll put the legs underneath his skin here. I'm going to bring one up here like this. I'll send that to the back, actually. And the other one can come out from over here and it'll be on top. There we go. I actually want this uh, little leafy grassy bit to come up over top of the leg. Another small one down there. And let's put his arms on here. I'm going to have his arm kind of coming down here and bring it up there. He's going to be holding this brush and this one. There we go. And we just need to put on some hands and feet with this guy. Don't have to be fancy with this. This is just a little demo to show you about my brushes. Messy little feet. And he's going to be holding the brush. And over here, his hand sticking out from underneath the grass. Last but not least, we'll draw on the brush that he's holding. There we go. Got a little brush for him to hold. There we go. So just to recap, we have our calligraphic brush that lets us be pressure sensitive and just a generic drawing brush. We have our scatter brush. It'll scatter objects along your stroke. Uh, you can adjust the size and the rotation and the color. You can make an art brush that will draw a single object. You can stretch along different paths change the thickness, change the darkness, change the color. And of course, a pattern brush will let you draw an object that will be repeated along a pattern. Or for this one here, I could make that a big, long, wiggly limb. So let's see how our brush monster looks. Get rid of that stuff. Ah, pretty good, pretty good. I you know, just want to add a little bit of grass too, I think. And there we go. It's a brush monster to teach you about brushes. Let's go through a couple quick tricks and tips. My first tip is to use brushes whenever you can. These brushes can be used for all sorts of things all the time. Don't make one brush and call it a day. Be like, that's my brush. I'm done. Make them all the time. You need to get comfortable with these techniques, what brushes can do. So you can bust out the brush techniques whenever you find a good place and time to use them. I mean, sure, adding leaves to that tree might be possible to do without a brush, but I bet it would be easier if you took the two minutes it takes to make the brush and using custom brushes whenever you can is how you'll practice making and using custom brushes so that you will become the custom brush master that you are destined to be. My next tip is to create an archive of all the brushes that you've ever made. There's no need to redo work that you've already done. Uh, you should keep a collection of the brushes you've made so that you have them to use in other documents in the future. I'm not saying you should reuse the same basic brushes that you've made over and over again forever. I mean, that's no way to evolve. But if you can make your life easier by using a perfect custom brush in more places than one, it's easy to do. Just create a blank document and paste a stroke with your new custom brush into that document. The brush will automatically be added to the brush library of that document. Save this as your new brush archive. In the future, when you make new brushes, copy and paste them into this document 
and after a while you'll have a big collection of your own brushes. Then, when you need brushes from this document, make a stroke with the brush that you need and copy it from this document and paste it into your new illustration. The brush will be added to the library of your new document and you can start using the brush in your illustration right away. My next tip is to experiment. There's a world of possibilities out there. You can make your own painting brushes from real painted strokes that you've taken a photo of and scanned and vectorized. I'm going to create a tutorial about that really soon, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. You can create pattern brushes to, to mimic mm. textures or drawing styles. You can use scatter and, and pattern brushes to save you time, not having to draw the same things over and over and over again to create an effect that you can create in just one minute with a brush. You can combine them. You can make multiple different brushes do different things together in different ways. And the possibilities are, are endless. I'm not gonna show you all of what you can do here. You'll have to go discover all this stuff for yourself. And there you have it. Custom brushes that are all your own. This is how you take your art to the next level. Trust me, once you get good at making and using custom brushes, your work will never be the same. That's the Doodle Machine guarantee. And that brings us to the end. I hope you liked the video. I hope you found it helpful. Please let me know in the comments below. Do you have any questions or is there anything that I didn't cover clearly enough in the video? Have you made your own custom brushes before? What's your favorite type of custom brush or a favorite brush that you've made? Please, I'd love to hear from you down there. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video or the thumbs down button if you dislike it. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. And as always, Thanks for watching.